Okay, Mr. Gamble here, we're just going to try some stuff with lasers to fraction grading first. So what you should notice there is several spots there, they're distinct, okay? And this is the diffraction grading using just 100 lines per millimetre. So let's see what happens if we actually put some smoke in the way so you can see the actual path going across. So you should be able to see there from the grating the beams going all the way across there. So as it reflects off that smoke, you should be able to see the lines of maximum interference going across. They head all the way to the screen there. So what I've just shown you there is this idea of the diffraction grating there and the lines of maximum coming through and going onto a screen in the zero order. So we've just done through the discussion of derivation of d sine theta. We've talked about what happens with the negligible intensity, so you get sharp intense maxima. Don't forget that the path difference here um, is very small because the distance between the slits is very small. So you have to go to quite a long angle to get that path difference to be big enough to get to your first wavelength of path difference, which is why those angles are further out than a double slit one. So coming down, we've also done white light as well. We talked about the fact that there are a range of colours and you get a first order spectrum here and a central white band. Now the spectrometer could be used in to measure wavelengths. What happens is you put a light source there, monochromatic usually, uh, it goes through a single slit, that actually causes diffraction, you get the light spreading to this lens here and that will send it through here parallel as rays to the diffraction grating. They'll come through here, you focus onto a screen then and then you'll get your multiple slit interference pattern there. So um, because you've got these slits being close together and you're going to have a much larger set of angles, it's much easier to get less um, uh, percentage errors in this. So you can work out wavelength by using the angle. Now you can measure the angle on one of these. It's here. You've got your diffraction grating in the middle. goes through a single slit there. Okay. And then you've got your telescopy sort of thing here. Uh, and you normally cover this up with a dark cloth or something so that you can actually see this fairly well. That will be pointing at a light source. If you point at a white light source, you'll still get the pattern here. You'll get a central white order maximum, and then you'll get a spectrum starting from violet out to red here, and you can measure the angle here to the nearest tenth of a degree. Okay, so that's your spectrometer there. Now what we're looking at today is laser speckle low, and I tried to show you that phenomenon in the dark, and it just didn't work, it's just too um, rough to see it, it's too uh, low the resolution of the camera. So it's a picture that would look like this, it's from wikimedia.com. You get a speckled pattern or a mottled pattern of red and black dots, okay? So it looks funny when you look at it with your eye. And the reason for that is that laser light is highly coherent. So there's high coherence across the beam like this, where they're pretty much in phase with each other, and also one section after the other stays in phase, in that same sort of phase relationship. So when it hits a rough surface, which is actually a different depth than whatever else to it, as this reflects off that surface there, you're going to get a path difference to the eye that's buried. Okay? So if you imagine your eyes down here, if there's your eye, as the light reflects off here and comes towards it this way, it will travel different path differences from different positions to different points on the eye. And so there's a path difference between this beam here and this beam here in arriving at your eye, or that particular spot at your eye. And because of the path difference there, if the path difference is whole wavelengths, if you're getting a bright spot there due to constructive interference, and if it happens to be an odd number of half wavelengths, like a half a wavelength, one and a half wavelengths, it's going to give you a black spot. So that's how you get this pattern of black and dark spots there called speckle. So the key thing to sort of point out was you understand it's when highly coherent light is reflecting off a rough surface, you get a speckle pattern. That's the description of how to set this up. To explain it, it's because that highly coherent light is going to reflect off different points on the rough surface and travel different path differences to each point on the eye and either arrive in phase and give you a red spot due to constructive interference or a black spot because it's uh, uh, due to out of phase uh, arrival in the path difference. So the key things here to be aware of is that the laser light is highly coherent. When it reflects off a rough surface, it's going to travel different distances because of the different depths in the surface. And because of that, you're going to get a path difference for any one position in the eye from all the different reflections. If that path difference is a whole number of wavelengths, it's going to arrive in phase, give you a nice bright spot. If it's arriving out of phase and give you half wavelength path differences, it's going to cancel out and give you destructive interference. The other one's constructive. And therefore you'll get a dark spot. 
and that means you get a mottled pattern of red and black spots on your eye there. So it's this sort of diagram here. So it's due to a part difference. Because the light's highly coherent, you will get constructive and in destructive interference at the different spots in the eyes. And you should be able to describe that pattern as well. Okay, thanks.